You see it all the time. 50, 55, 60 hits, and women suddenly start gaining fat in their abdomen more than they ever did before. Okay. You know, you'll largely hear women talking about how like, it's frustrating they gain fat in their hips and in their thighs and in their legs, but then it really gets frustrating for most women after menopause or the beginning of menopause when hormone fluctuations are totally wild and estrogen levels are starting to plummet. Well, how does a ketogenic diet potentially affect this and how does it stop sort of that abdominal fat accumulation that occurs in women, especially after menopause? Let's break it down. Hey, after this video, I do want you to check out Thrive Market. They're an online membership-based grocery store. Makes it super easy, super convenient to do a ketogenic diet because everything just gets shipped right to your doorstep. But I think the easiest part is the fact that you can just log on, you can go straight to a ketogenic category, and the foods that they have there are pretty much all Thomas approved. Like, I work closely with them to make sure that they're really having good products in there, at least from the ones that I recommend. So if you go and you use that link down below, you can save 25% off your first member but also get a free gift as well. And it just ends up saving you a bunch of time, a bunch of money, because you're not having to go to the grocery store. It makes it uber, uber convenient. And they have been a big supporter of this channel for years and years, and I cannot thank them enough for making this all possible. So check them out down below in the description after this video. Okay, so there's a reason to why most women start to gain fat when their estrogen levels drop. Now, I have to just get it out there that estrogen is not bad for women. Now there's different kinds of estrogen. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole today. We're talking more about why fat is accumulated more in the midsection for women after menopause. But it has to do with the fact that androgen activity increases and estrogen levels drop. And a lot of this has to do with insulin resistance too. But let's break it down a little bit more. So the Journal of Fertility and Sterility had published a study that found that there is a correlation between estrogen and, of course, abdominal fat accumulation. When estrogen levels were low, abdominal fat levels increased. And they found this after menopause. They also found this in what is called hypoestrogenemia, just people that had low levels of estrogen to begin with. Now, the mechanism of action behind this is pretty intriguing. If you look at a study that was published in Pathology Oncology Research, you find that estrogen is correlated with insulin resistance. So with estrogen levels being lower, insulin resistance tends to increase, which means your glucose tolerance isn't as good, you're not able to utilize carbohydrates much better, so you ultimately end up depositing fat in the midsection a lot more. But additionally, like I mentioned before, you have this increase in androgen activity and a continued decrease in estrogen. This study just demonstrated this, that androgens went up, estrogen went down, which means just like men, which are higher in androgen, they store more fat in the midsection, right? So as men, it's a lot easier for us to store fat as visceral fat. It's a lot easier for us to get belly fat than it is for a woman. But after menopause, that changes. After menopause, a woman's gonna distribute a lot more fat in the midsection because guess what? More androgen activity, just like a male. Less estrogen, just like a male. So it's going to start taking on those characteristics. Well, what does the ketogenic diet have to do with this? Well, the ketogenic diet is a very powerful way of modulating this extra glucose and controlling this insulin resistance piece. So when you look at a lot of the research, you find, okay, yeah, when we are on a ketogenic diet, or one particular study at least that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that HbA1c dropped dramatically, fasting glucose dropped quite a bit, and all these other glucose tolerance markers improved. Okay, so showing that, yeah, when you're on a ketogenic diet, you're having less constant bombardment of insulin that isn't fading out the signals all the time. It isn't fading out the receptors. So therefore, with less constant insulin pressure, you're having more of an ability for estrogen to remain moderately high. So if we jump back to that pathology oncology research journal, okay, it showed that hyperinsulinemia affects the androgen receptors and affects estrogen as well. So when we have high levels of insulin, it's affecting our estrogen. Now, if you look at some of the research that takes a look at like PCOS, which I've talked about in multiple studies, okay, polycystic ovarian syndrome, we see that, yes, once again, insulin plays a big role. Once you modulate insulin, a lot of the PCOS symptoms seem to go away because once again, insulin is driving down those estrogen levels. So we have to factor in, okay, well, how does the ketogenic diet modulate this? Well, if you look at the simple mechanism of action, the ketogenic diet is going to have a lot less of an insulin process to begin with. 
you're not signaling insulin all the time because you're not having to uptake carbohydrates. So therefore, your insulin levels are dropping. So this plays such a role in where you deposit fat because it might allow you to keep your estrogen levels a little bit more stable. Like you see people talking all the time, after menopause, you should start bringing in additional supplementation to elevate estrogen levels. You should do this, that. You should try to kind of drop your progesterone levels. You know, you hear it all the time. But what you really want to just be doing is focusing more on the insulin equation because that's going to allow things to stable. And we talk about early menopause as well. Like what is potentially happening there? Well, it'd be easy to make, once again, a correlation. This is a hypothesis. But early menopause might be coming on because we have so much in the way of hyperinsulinemia occurring in our society that it is triggering the drop in estrogen that is just cascading that and signaling that whole early menopause thing to happen. Normally, it's going to happen around, you know, 50, 55, 60, 65, whatever. But now we're starting to see it happen 45, 50, 55, because maybe we're just exposing ourselves to so much insulin. So if you are over the age of 50 and you're feeling like you're starting to store a lot more body fat in the midsection, more so than where you used to, well, then it might be a good idea for you to look at how you are going about a ketogenic diet, or if you haven't already, maybe you should consider it. Now, I'm very clear to say that the ketogenic diet isn't always for everybody. It doesn't have to be done all the time. There are certain circumstances in which modulating your insulin levels might be a wise idea. And when we know that strong correlation between estrogen and insulin, and also between estrogen and where we store fat, I think it's a pretty solid case for you to at least experiment it. But as always, I don't want to push it on anyone. Keep it locked in here on my channel.